So I just had one of the most stressful exams of, I think, MEBS because the syllabus was outstanding in, in the sense there was a lot. There was a lot of syllabus, especially for microbiology and pathology. So much so that I was, I never usually study like five to 10 minutes before the exam, but I was actually flipping through the book. So yeah, these exams were one hell of a ride. But uh, I came up with weird techniques to actually get through this because I feel that the way I studied for these exams is the best I've ever studied for any exams. And pretty actually, I'm, I'm actually pretty proud. There are, there can be improvements, but you know what, let's let's take credit today and let's say that uh, Sriya, you did a good job. So I'm gonna tell you 10 things that I did with their pros and cons. And then it's totally up to you if you wanna use them in your exam prep or not. Number one is the one sit method, or that's how I call it, or that's the name I gave it right now. But uh, in this, I keep my phone for charging. First of all, my phone's probably drained out from the night and I keep it for charging for at least three, four hours, okay? And these three, four hours, I am only sitting in one place. I obviously get up to go, you know, pee. But <laughs> other than that, I'm just sitting in one place and I'm studying. So in this method, another thing that I don't do is look at the time because I get conscious when I see the time. But you might think, why is she studying for three or four hours together? Won't she get burnt out? But listen, I'm taking breaks. Every 40 minutes, 45 minutes, I'm taking breaks. But all of these breaks are sleep breaks. So I finish studying a topic and then I sleep. And this is in the library, so there's no risk of, you know, oversleeping. So the minute I feel like, huh, I'm not too tired, I get up and I start studying again. This way, three, four hours, no phone, just sleep breaks. I mean, the only con I can think of, you might miss important phone calls, but it's okay, yaar. Chalta hai. exam ki time chalta. And uh, I'm like, yeah, room mein to meri padhai nahi hogi because I honestly, honestly, because in the morning it's still fine, but when it's late in the night, I can't study in my room. I, I'll sleep off. So I just went to my friend's room. She was like, listen, I'm gonna invade your space, but please give me space to study. So then I just went there. I sat there, I studied. I also took my sleep breaks there. I got up, I studied again, and I came back to my room and I slept. And honestly, I'm so thankful to Kushi for letting me do that because now the third thing is, Whenever I had a doubt, without thinking even a second, I would either go on YouTube or I would contact one of the teachers. I would go to the department and get my doubt cleared. Because I knew that I wouldn't be able to study properly if this concept wasn't clear in my head. There are a lot of pros to this, but the only con to this is that teachers aren't really available all the time. You won't really find the thing you're looking for all the time. So at this point, I'd like to introduce y'all to an app known as Philo or F-I-L-O Philo, which is an instant tutoring app. In this, you can find tutors available for a one-on-one -on -one live session in case you have any kinds of questions, concepts or queries that you need to get cleared. So in this, you can either take a picture of your question or type down your question or problem and put it up on the app which will match a tutor for you. And tutors get connected to you within a span of 60 seconds. And these are one-on-one -on -one live interactive sessions, which can be as small as three to four minutes to get all your concepts and problems solved. If you do happen to like a tutor, you can mark them as your favorite and keep learning from them. You know the best part about this app? It's the fact that you get undivided one-on-one -on -one attention as compared to a class, a mass gathering, which is basically your daily lectures. And each of your weak points and concepts can be focused on. And the best part is you don't have to spend hours together searching for something on the internet when a tutor can instantly teach it to you. Honestly, I didn't have such a service when I was studying for NEET and I'm so glad you have because if you're studying for any competitive exam or in general, if you're just studying, this is a great resource. And if you do feel that this is gonna help you, then you can find the link for the same in my description. Okay, moving back. The fourth thing that I did, I made sessions, like study sessions, according to meals, right? So I would start with breakfast in the morning and then I'll have a study session till lunch and then a study session till snacks and then a study session till dinner. Weirdly so, this made a lot of sense in my head because I don't have to voluntarily take breaks. The breaks are only coming to me. Which brings me to my next thing. I did not study beyond 11.30 in the night. I'll tell you why. See, my library closes at 11.30. I knew that if I'm gonna come to my room, I'm gonna waste time sitting in front of the book at least for two hours instead of that, might as well do something that I really like. So after 11.30, I should just come to my room, watch Modern Family, watch anime, watch Coffee with Karan, 
and sing and do stuff that I really like and it's fine because I've been studying the whole day so that also kind of keeps my brain calm that that's the time that caters to my mental health. The con for this would probably be you're losing out on time but the pro really outweighs the cons in this one. So sixth one is a method of study that I think I have mentioned before also but I used it extensively during these exams. So in this I would basically open the book for example I'm opening KDD it's a pharmac topic. Um, I would take another paper and write down everything I know about that drug. I, I would write down its mechanism of action, its adverse effects, its contraindications, interactions, everything that I know, that I remember. And then I would go back and I would check in the book. See, all the time I was too lazy to write down. So sometimes I used to just think of all of this in my head and verify if I was going right. This way it gives me some sort of confidence that, hey, I know this much. I can probably write this much at least. There is no con to this method. There are only pros. The least you can think of is maybe your time is getting wasted, but honestly, you wouldn't call it a time waste. Oh, and the next thing. So what I started doing was maintain a to-do list for every topic. Not, I wouldn't say every subject. I wouldn't make my to-do list as pharmac. I would make the to-do list as do antihypertensives today, do this drugs today, do that today. Because that way, it's like a big spread out to-do list and I keep this on my phone because my phone is handy and some random paper where I wrote to-do list is not handy. So in my phone, I write down all my meetings, my appointments and all the topics I need to finish on one day and maybe stuff like just collect my laundry also because I, I felt that made me so much more organized and I stopped forgetting stuff a lot. And the best part is when you, um, the best part is when you fragment your goals now it's it's very satisfying when you tick off everything at the end of the night because you're like wow I did so much there is again no con to this method other than other than nothing yeah there's no con okay eighth one very important I said tada bye bye to everything else except my studies and food and probably one or two of my friends so I've been having some issues with regards to my research which was really stressing me out all the time and I, I kept trying to study but then I keep thinking about the research thing. Then I, I, then I keep thinking of what content do I make, what YouTube video do I make. Then I kept thinking about what song should I sing next, what... Bro, there was a lot of thinking basically. And that's when I realized, you know, I have exams right now. How about I just look at this and just ignore all these issues until after exams. See, the con for this is that you're definitely ignoring all your issues. The pro is that you can actually focus on your exams. See, if it was like... If, if my exams were like 10-15 days, I wouldn't have done that. But it was just a 3-day exam. So I basically could afford doing, you know, pushing everything after exams. <laughs> Ninth thing is my favorite. So what I used to do is, uh, I left my books at the library overnight. So that in the morning, I have the motivation to get up and go to the library and study. The pros to this is you study. The cons to this is your books are going to get stolen. And the final thing that I did, which not a lot of people did was, I only stuck with the main books. That can be bad in a way because you won't be able to finish the syllabus that easily. Fortunately, I was able to, but I honestly can't do this book shifting between the main book and the reference book. So throughout these exams, I read KDT, I read Robbins, and I read um, Anupama Chopra. What? No, her name's not Anupama Chopra. What's, what's the book's name? Oh yeah, okay, Apurva Shastri. Oh my God. Finally, 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 uh, the one thing that I kept in mind was that all these efforts, all this keeping your phone aside, all this not thinking about anything else, and all these studies would all be worth for. It's because I am going out dinner with the girls and then we're gonna do some little bit of party. It's worth it because I could dress up and do my makeup finally. Anyways, um, I will see you guys later. My next video is going to be amazing. You're gonna love it. Uh -huh.